what would we have ever accomplished without the support from the ones who love us? I've never said this on this channel, but I've said it a million times out and about. But frankly, I don't know where I would be personally without my parents. Without what I got from my mom's side, I wouldn't be able to have the drive needed to do what I want to do. And without what I got from my dad's side, I wouldn't be able to be open or flexible to anything and everything and try it at least once. Even as this world is going to shit at the moment, regardless of how much trouble you're facing every day, there are always someone there to comfort you and give you guidance on really what's going on both inside and out especially when it comes to what your path might be as you become more independent by the year and with that i personally have grown to respect parents or anyone in a parental role because of how much they're adding on their backs figuratively and literally in today's video we're going to cover a near two hour film which spans 13 years and is able to combine both the story of one woman's growth through love, marriage, and raising children, and the course of those children's lives from birth to when they found their own paths. My name is Payne, and this is the latest edition of the Mamadou Hosoda Project, Episode 3, Wolf Children. The story follows a college student named Hana who falls in love with a guy, we never get his name. For now, let's just call him Guy. After they hit it off, Guy reveals to Hana that he is a werewolf, so now he is a wolf guy. But blinded by her love for him, Hana decides to do something that is illegal in 36 states, including DC and Puerto Rico, and they have two children with the blood of wolves, Ame and Yuki, also known as <sighs> wolf children. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! Shortly thereafter, things take a turn for the complicated when the wolfman gets killed in an accident while hunting food for the family. As the children get older, not only does Hana have to hide them from everyone due to not only the fact that they're freaking wolves, but that they can constantly change forms, but also have to endure the issue of raising two rowdy and unruly children by herself. Unfortunately, after receiving numerous noise complaints from their nosy neighbors, Hana moves them to the countryside where she works hard to repair their newly acquired dilapidated house and becomes friends with the locals. It's from this point on the narrative switches from Hana to Ame and Yuki gradually as years go by as they each hit a turning point where they decide which direction to take for the rest of their lives. In creating the concept, Hosoda said he wanted to make a film where the audience could experience the arduous process of raising children all at once over the course of the runtime, while also adding a new spin by making them wolf children, which also fits given that wolves are merely family-oriented anyway. During pre-production, two major things were happening at once. One was the creation of the screenplay. Given Hosoda created the story for Summer Wars, it's only fitting that he would take a crack at actually writing the script for this film alongside frequent screenwriting collaborator Satoko Okudera. In three months, Okudera worked on the first and second drafts of the film, while Hosoda worked on the third and fourth drafts, to which they would combine their scripts together for the fifth and final draft, the shooting script, with the intention to make a film that would get different emotions depending on who watched it from two different sources and from two different viewpoints. Meanwhile, Hosoda was in the final moments of creating his own studio, Studio Shizu, which would open in April of 2011. The logo reminiscent of Studio Ghibli's logo, in which it's a character from a previous film the co-creator of the studio has directed. Obviously, with Ghibli, it is Totoro. In this case, it's Makoto from The Girl Who Left Through Time. Just like his previous work, Hosoda hired cast members and staff, which aren't really known for anime, most notably Takao Osawa, who voiced the Wolfman, is this was his first appearance in an anime ever, after a very sizable career in front of the camera. And behind the scenes, a role was given to an internationally renowned stylist named Daisuke Iga, who had the role of creating Hana's clothes over the course of the film, which is harder than you think, and uh, Chie Morimoto, an art director for producing album art and ads for numerous J-pop groups was hired for the art book sequence where Hana lays down the ground rules to Ame and Yuki about not showing people that they have 
wolf ears. Now, I wish I had more info in this part. Unfortunately, I don't, but it's not going to stop me from talking about it anyway. In an interview, both Hosoda and animation director T Takaki Yamashita aimed on making wolf children the same way the films they grew up with were made. Like when Panda and the Magic Serpent and, and Puss in Boots had a few key animators way back when, and Galaxy Express 3.9 had a staff of 15 people do 100 to 150 cuts of the film each, a move which would make the film flow well and accurately convey changes in expression a character would undergo as the scene goes on. To achieve this effect, the film had 20 animators working on the film, with about half of them working at the studio itself. One animator, Toshiyuki Inoue, worked on 130 cuts of the film alone, including the iconic snowy mountain scene. This was all him. To put that in the context, while making an anime film, it was considered quick if you made 10 cuts a month, and not uncommon to spend a whole week on a single cut on its own. It's a very impressive feat, and I wish I could say more, but oddly enough, I can't find any concrete info on when production started, when production ended, any like timetable, but Still, what they aimed to do and the talent these animators had at their disposal to pull this off is still amazing and only added to the lasting visual image this film holds. The film premiered in France on June 25th, 2012, before premiering in Japan a little less than a month later, where it grossed approximately $55 million throughout its entire run and led Hosoda to a three-peat with, with his third best animated feature at the Japanese Oscars. In October of 2012, it became the first host of the film to be acquired by Funimation for North American distribution, and boy were they excited about it. The film was released in North America in November of 2013, but for fans who just couldn't wait any longer, there was a website dedicated to its release. Uh, looking through the descriptions, uh, it, it's very, very interesting. Uh, Wolf Children is a staggeringly beautiful animated feature film. It's epic cinematic achievement. Look, I understand that people think of the film this way now, but imagine seeing the descriptions like that, and you haven't seen the film yet. You would think that Funimation is just jumping the gun. The film achieves what it's set out to do on both an internal and external level. You first see it on a structural level. While you can make the argument that there are three distinct parts of the film, given that the first part is extremely freaking short, Wolf Children is broken up into basically two different perspectives, two different narratives. The first part follows Hana as she first meets the Wolfman, and we later see her raise two children literally from birth, the same things happening over and over again, as illustrated by the same shot of Yuki complaining to Hana about something, and let's not forget, throughout this whole time, I should say this, Hana never yells at them. Like, at all. Instead of going off on them, she instead understands their animal instinct, providing a more sympathetic, understanding, patient, and emotional stance towards parenting, which is a sharp contrast to how parenting is viewed, not only here in the West, but also apparently in the East, too. I, that, that just should not go unmentioned. It's insane. As they leave their apartment and move into the dilapidated farmhouse, we see more examples of just how Ame and Yuki act in the real world, the former coming off as more introverted, while the latter is basically a social butterfly. All the while, Hana tries to fix the cabin they've settled their life in, as well as hanging out with the local farmers who, of course, don't know their secret. The perspective switch on an ingenious tracking shot that even people who've never seen the film know about, thanks to the Every Frame of Painting video on it, uh, it, it, it is one of, if not the best ways to use this technique, and animation really, really enhances things, and, and this is absolutely imaginative. As with just a simple move of the shot, it, it's a, I picture it as like a camera, obviously it's not, but it feels that way, but with a just simple move of the camera, literal years go by. The part of the story which is a metaphor for change and how one is accepting it, Yuki changes gears from what she was as a kid and becoming more human, while Ame, on the other hand, basically turns full emo. He, he looks like he's going to listen to Tyler, the creator's wolf album anytime soon. But seriously, he actually takes Yuki's place and adopts the mindset that he is a wolf and would rather be one like his father, so much so that he is even wearing the same clothes as the man. 
Abe is at a crossroads internally because he doesn't have that side of the family with him to help him discover who he is, even if he was the one who made it possible for you to shapeshift in the first place. But even with that hole left open, the point of the film is how the parent, in this case Hana, is adapting to the needs of Ame and Yuki rather than the tons and tons of examples all over the place of the kids adapting to what the parents want. Not just in Japan, not just in America, but everywhere. And this is partly why I think for the first time in his career, Mamoru Hosoda really hit the nail in the coffin. His hair was perfect. First, this is without question his best script. There are numerous scenes which don't even have dialogue in them, which gives a lot to the film on an emotional level, especially in scenes where Hana expresses how much she really cares for Ame and Yuki. His ability to squeeze 13 years, again, into two hours is an impressive feat in and of itself, and it made it feel like four. I can see how someone would be turned off by the fact that the film feels longer than it actually is, but personally, I didn't mind it. The emotional peaks in the film, mainly in the second half, were expressed very well with CG, especially in the scene where they're all running down the snowy hill, which turned out to be one of the more defining moments in Hosoda's career thus far. All of the characters were endearing and had a purpose, everything made sense. I've seen people talk about how they're confused as to why Ame and Yuki had to choose between being a wolfman and just be both, to which I say that's not the point of the film. Again, the point wasn't about how Ame and Yuki chose to become one of these things. It was about how accepting of a mother Hana became when they made that decision to either stay human or become a wolf. Something which, again, is not that commonplace. And it's a shame. So yeah, in case I haven't said it enough, this is my favorite host of the film. This is a film that's gonna be stuck in my mind for a while. Not bad for a movie which doesn't say the word love once, but knows all too well how to show it.